Yeah. Suppose I said that to you as well. Yeah. I have a yeah. God that I'm going to. Would you ever take me as God? When I say I am going to my God, I have a God I'm going to. Any rational human being, sane human being will say, oh, you are saying that you have a God that you're going to. Yeah. That means you are not God, so unless you believe the, that is it there's one God the, sorry, and another God. Does he not say he's going to the Father? No, he says I'm and going your Father to too. So he's not exclusive. He's not the Son of God. You are exactly the same Son of God like he is. He I, says, I'm going to my Father. Look, if somebody says, I'm going to my Father and your Father, are you the same Son? Pardon? If Jesus said, I'm going to my Father and your Father, right. is his Father exclusive or it's the same Father that you have? Same father. Same father, right. Family. So if you are a son of God, if Jesus is a son of God, you are a son of God too. You have the same father. Nope, doesn't say that. He says, I'm going to my father and your father. English, language, Greek, the same. But he didn't stop there. He says, I'm going to my God and your God. Now tell me, my friend, does he have a God that he's going to? Yes. Okay. Does God have a God? And he's, yes. Okay. If God has a God, I would like to know how does God have a God and what is God in your understanding? Because God in my understanding is someone who is independent. He doesn't need another God. It makes no sense for God who is eternally existent without a beginning, everlasting with no end, can or need to have a God for what? Because he's one God with the no, Father. No, 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 tell me. Why does God need a God in the first place? He's one God with the Father. One second. If you have a God who has a God, can you tell me why this one God or this God needs another God? For what? The Does he need God. anything? For example, is he lacking in knowledge? Is he lacking in power? Is he lacking? No. Nope. Okay. So was Jesus given power? A submission. No, 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 no. Was Jesus given power and authority? And According to the scripture. It's one part from the Father, yes. It According to the that. scripture, did Jesus receive glory? Did he receive power? Did he receive authority? Yep. The answer is yes. So before he received it, did he have them? He always had it and never stopped having no, it. No, 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 no. Before he received them, obviously he didn't have it. Because if you had it, how can you even receive it? It makes no sense. No, you, haven't you didn't have them, that's why you received it. Yeah, I'm not. No. No. Can, I, can I give you something that you already have? I mean, if you look, if you're 100% knowledgeable, can I give you more knowledge and make you knowledgeable? I mean, the point he asked me. I feel like you can make an argument for unlocking it in a way like it, it was already there but if you are 100% knowledgeable can I give you more knowledge no. exactly so if you're divine to begin with I cannot make you more divine because you already have it all the divine characteristics or attributes you should have it I think Michael have you looked into Islam it was like clearly obviously when I was like 14 which is like 13 years ago yes perhaps you can look at it now because what we are saying is you, you, you would not lose anything, you would in fact gain more. You would not lose in the belief in God, you would not lose in the belief or anything about righteous actions, to be good to people, to be kind, to be just, to be loving, none of that. You would not lose Jesus Christ. You love him as a prophet and a messenger as he is because he came to tell the people about God. So there's nothing you're losing. All you'll be doing is molding your belief a little bit here and there and coming back to the correct principle of God. That's what Islam will be for you. Um, I'm too firm in my Christian faith, just as you're very firm in your Islamic faith, and I can see that you're not. So even if provide, evidence is provided for the truthfulness of Islam, you'd still stick to your firmness? Even if truth was manifested in all its clarity, about Islam being true, would you still hang on to Christianity? Uh, sorry, okay, okay, you're using a word there called if, okay? Yes, I conditional believe, statement. I don't believe that is possible, but if and only if, then yes. Yeah, good. So in, so in principle, you are open to the idea if Islam is established to be true to you, you would accept it because if it's true, it's true. I am so firm and so confident in my Christian faith in Jesus Christ. Okay. I, it's not a possibility in my mind. Right. So you'll go. Born again Christians so, who said the same thing. And they, <laughs> they were never born again to begin with, you'll say, right? Pardon? Would you say they were never born again to believe with? Uh, I didn't have but, any firm thoughts on that. Right, right. So do you have a guarantee that you're going to go to heaven? Confidence, yes. Yeah. So if you now become a Muslim, you still have that guarantee, right? Um, I don't have a firm feeling that. 
No, no. If you have a guarantee that you're going to go to heaven, irrespective, unconditional, yeah. then it doesn't matter if you become an atheist or a Muslim, you're going to go to heaven. But the fact that you realize that that's not the case, that means your belief, your salvation, sorry, is conditional. Conditional in remaining Christian. Conditional, in be it's conditional. So you don't have a guarantee, you don't have a, a, a certificate where God says they go a one-way ticket to heaven. You have a conditional faith. Conditional faith can easily be understood and say, look, that means I need to worship God. We are not asking you to worship Prophet Muhammad are we? If, if you do, you'll go to hell. <laughs> That's for sure. We are asking you to worship the God of Christ, the God of Muhammad, peace be upon them all. We are asking you to worship the God who is the creator of everything. And Jesus we, was a Muslim. We, <laughs> like 700 years later, Muslims came along. Do you know what Muslim means though? What does it mean? Someone who submits and surrenders their will, willingly and sincerely, to the will of okay, the one okay. true God. So in the, lit the absolute literal sense of the word? Yeah, so he was a Muslim because he submitted to God. Yeah. yeah. But not, not in the word that I would have used, but fair enough. But, but that's the reality, he submitted. So he is a Muslim. You have to accept the fact Jesus that Jesus is a Muslim. Did he pray like a Muslim, put his forehead on the ground, weeping and crying and, and, and surrendering to say, not according to my will, but according to your will? Let this cup be away from me in the Garden of Gethsemane. Yeah, so he prayed like a Muslim too. Did he wash like a Muslim before ablution, before he prayed and so on? He did that too. Did he fast? Yes. Did he pray? Yes. Did he do charity? Did... Yeah. You know what? All of the things that you see about Christ, like he is a very good Muslim. That's what we believe about him. No. By the way, who did Jesus say was the only true God? According to Jesus, he said, who is the only true God? According to you, who is the only true God? The Father. Only the Father? So you're you're in Unitarian? Because I believe the Son's God, as the Son says. So say again? I believe the Son's God, not what the Son says. I oh, so it's not just the Father who is God then? Um, one God, three persons. No, no, but that's that's what Jesus did not believe. Jesus believed only one person was the only true God, not three persons. How many persons is the Father? Where did, where did Jesus say that? John 17. Where did he say there was only one person? John yeah. 17 and 3. Can we establish the Father is three person or one person? The Father is one person. And he said the Father is the only true God. So how many persons is the only true God? Exactly. Three. <laughs> the Father is only one person, come on. And he said that one person who is the Father is the only true God. No, he says the only true God. And who is that? Father. Okay, is the Father one or three persons? The Father is one part of three persons. No, no, the Father is not part of three persons. The Father is one person. Jesus is one person. The Holy Spirit is one person. Am I right? Yep. Okay. So we got three persons that we have identified so far. From these three, who was the only true God? All of them. You see, that's where he goes against Jesus Christ. Because yeah. in John 7 and 3, it says only the Father. Okay, so now you tell me, should I believe you or Jesus? Because you clearly are, are, are against what Jesus is saying. No, 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 no. No? Okay, what is Jesus saying in John 7 and 3? Um, but you think this, that was, the Father is the God, the only true God? No, no. What did you say again? Because you need to speak up. I can barely hear you. Uh, is it my hard to understand accent? No, no. I understand your accent. It's just the volume. Most people don't. Okay. No, no. We understand. You if, Je if, if Jesus says this is eternal life, that they may know you, the Father, yep. the only true God, yep. and Jesus Christ, from your sense, okay, is clearly acknowledging over there that the only true God is one person, that the Father, and there's only one, sorry, the, the Christ is Him, Jesus. Okay, so we have got, we have got two, di two different persons identified differently. The Father is one person who's been identified, are you listening? Yeah, yeah, yeah. The Father is one person who's been identified as the only true God, and we got Jesus who has been identified as a Christ. So Christ is not the only true God. It is the Father who is the only true God. So because you believe that God is three persons and Jesus believes that God is only the Father, so your belief is different to that of Jesus and different to all the prophets in the Bible. Because there's not a single prophet or a messenger or Jesus even 
who worshipped and prayed to anyone we will have a discussion like a triune God. Yeah. It is I'm only you Christians oh. who came in the fourth century. Gentlemen here. Yeah. Okay, okay. The Trinity no, was established in no, the fourth no, no, century. Uh, okay. No, no, have a discussion. So you have to worship a triune God. This is not the message of the Bible. Okay? So really, honestly, you know, should I believe you or Jesus? Okay, so if I need to believe Jesus, then your belief is something that should be rejected. No problem. What's your name? Michael. Michael. Very nice meeting you, Michael. Thank you very much. Jazakallah khairan. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Subscribe to Sam Dawa and to all loving Dawa to Soul. Dawa to Soul. Welcome, Lakh Haran. Salam alaikum.